Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're having an awesome week. I am finally, finally ready to run my UJSSM Spirit Run and I'm stoked. I can't wait to do it. People have been asking me for a while to do a dedicated pot stilling spirit run video. Blah, 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 blah. So I figured this is kind of the perfect chance to do just that. Hey guys, welcome to Still It. This is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. So if that's your thing, if that's what you're into, have a look around and if you dig this channel, think about hitting the subscribe button down below. It'd be awesome to have you on board. Alright guys, like I said today, I am doing a spirit run for the UJSSM and I'm going to be talking specifically about running a pot still and kind of what's involved for a spirit run. To do that, obviously I'm going to need something in the boiler and a pot still as well, so let me get that sorted and I'll get right back to you. Just in case you guys don't know, this is my homemade still and right now it's just a straight up pot still. It can also be used as a CCVM as well though. If you haven't seen me talking about this still before or you haven't seen me talking about this build, I'll stick a card up top for that right now. And I've also just charged the still with 30 litres of UJSSM low wines at 35% from generations 1 through 4. Once again, if you're not sure what I'm talking about there, if you haven't seen the videos on making the UJSSM, I'll stick a card up top right now. It's freaking hot as balls here today, hold on. <laughs> Manawatsu has turned me into a pussy, it's like 27 degrees or something. <laughs> In any case, I think that gives us a good place to start this video, and that would be the question of whether or not to do a stripping run first or whether just to go straight to a spirit run and what the frick is a stripping run versus a spirit run anyway. So a stripping run is basically when you put the wash into a still, run it super hard and fast as a pot still to cut down the volume of the wash you're working with. A spirit run on the other hand is pretty much whenever you're running the still with the intention of that being a final product that comes out the other end. I could tell you what I think about this, but I think a better way to go at it is to paraphrase a reply I saw, Silly Psycho. I'm sorry dude if I'm saying your right, name right. I've never quite got it, to be honest, but um... Anyway, Silly Psycho made a comment on a Reddit post in the Firewater subreddit. And this guy is one of the guys that is just always there helping people out. So from the community to you dude, thank you. We appreciate it, man. Anyway, here we go. Why would you strip or why would you not strip before doing a spirit run? So first up, obviously it manages to cut down the volume you're working with for the same sort of rough amount of alcohol and that has a few benefits. One of those is the fact that you're effectively distilling a larger amount of wash at one time, making your cuts more manageable or I guess you could say more obvious. If you imagine that you've got a larger amount of heads that you start with, when you're cutting that down into 500 mil, mil jars, you may actually end up, you know, with three whole jars of heads rather than one and a half, which then mixes into hearts and yeah, you get the picture, right? Second is that because you're starting with a higher ABV in the boiler, it's going to be easier to get a higher ABV out the spout at the other end during the spirit run. That can be a positive or a negative depending on which way you look at it, so that one's up to you guys. It also essentially saves you a little bit of time. If you're going to take four washes all the way through to a finished product, that is four spirit runs that you have to run slow, methodically, and watch really careful, break down into cuts, and then blend back together. On the other hand, you can strip all four of those, which is a much quicker process, throw it into one spirit run, and then do that process only once. So it's going to save you a bit of time. On the other hand, however, if you just go straight from the wash, to a spirit run you're more likely to be able to pull through some of those original flavors in the wash itself over into your finished product so you got to weigh these things up against each other i don't want to go into too much more detail on that right now because i have done a video on stripping runs in the past i just wanted to touch on it now because it's one of those questions that pops up over and over and over again all right so the stripping run itself how are we going to do it 
So now you've put something into your stool and today we're specifically talking about pot stools which are a totally different thing to a reflux stool in case you're not sure about that right now. So today just keep in mind that we're only talking about pot stools which are going to specifically relate to things like rum and whiskey, things where you want to carry flavour over from the original wash into the final product. So today I am running my UJSSM and the first thing I need to do is heat that still up to running temperature. Right now I'm running with 4 kilowatts of juice and that is way too much for a spirit run. The whole idea of a spirit run is that you're going to run slow and methodical with a just a steady drip coming out of the spout, get those really defined fractions and I know that's kind of a funny thing to say if we're talking relative to a reflux stool but we still for the pot stool want those nice defined fractions so we can get rid of the heads, we can get rid of the tails and be left with that really nice cut in the middle. Okay it's all very well and good to say that right but what temperature should you be running your still at? That was a test. <laughs> so it turns out guys we are not going to be talking about how to run the still in terms of temperature and this is another thing that comes up over and over again. In the mind of a new distiller it makes sense right like how hot do I run the still to make it go the speed I want or, or to get the right ABV coming out the end or to get the product I want it makes sense in a new distiller's mind. For an advanced distiller this is like the most frustrating thing ever because that's just not how it works. Throwing more energy or electricity or gas or whatever it is that you're heating the still with at it isn't going to make it boil at a different temperature. All it's going to do is make it evaporate faster or slower. To add to the complexity we're talking about here, obviously the reason we're distilling in the first place is to separate some of the chemicals from the other chemicals. So the process of distilling itself changes the chemical makeup of the liquid in the still, changing the temperature it's going to boil at. Anyway you may have noticed that the sound of that still just changed, it's gone from kind of like the sound of a almost boiled jug to the sound of a very almost boiling jug. That's telling me I gotta get over there and turn the elements way down and get ready to start my run. So we're over at the still now and I've got my elements turned way down with my SCR here and essentially I'm waiting for the vapour to warm up enough to come up and over the arm down through the condenser and condense back as a liquid into my jar on the other side over here. So the obvious question now is if we're not going to run the still based on the temperature what are we going to run it on? And the answer is basically the speed of the offtake over here at the spout. How much of our distillate is coming out of that spout so they, like I said before the more energy I put into the wash or the low winds down here the faster the evaporation happens but what I didn't necessarily tell you was the faster it happens the less refined that process is or the more muddled up everything is the lower the ABV is going to be the more hearts are going to be in the heads the more heads in the hearts and so on and so forth. Hey there we go! <laughs> You're not setting a temperature. 73 degrees is what I need and that's what I'm going to go to. You're deciding whether or not you want it to be a more pure process or a more grungy process I guess. Neither of those things are right and you're going to have to get used to that on your system with your favourite recipes depending on how you like to drink your favourite drink. In any case we've got the first drops coming out of the still right now and I need to talk to you about four shots. So you may notice right now I am using this dirty old jar to collect the first bit of liquid coming off the still and the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to call these four shots and I'm not going to use them for anything except for fire lighter, window cleaner, that sort of stuff. Or of course a cleaning run later on. Four shots are the first bit of a run, the most volatile chemicals coming out of the wash or the low winds right at the beginning and like I said we're not going to use these for anything, we're not going to reuse them and we're definitely not going to be drinking them. They can contain some pretty nasty chemicals that you don't want to be drinking for health reasons but on top of that they're going to taste a bit crappy and they are going to burn like buggery and give you a big ass hangover the next day so if the safety stuff doesn't scare you off hopefully that does. Once again if you ask me Jesse how much four shots should I take off before I start collecting heads the answer is going to be it depends. <laughs> Depending on who you ask you're going to get a different answer 
depending on how much you're putting in the still or how much wash you make, depending on what you make, how you make it. It's kind of a huge topic. And honestly, right now, I don't want to get right into it. So for me personally, with this amount of UJSSM, I'd probably normally take off sort of two to 300 mils of four shots. And I know to some people that's probably really low, but the reason that I'm happy to do that is I am super, super anal about my heads. Like I hate, I really don't want those heads in there. So I know that I'm gonna cut out most of those four shots anyway. And the jars that are really nasty and I'm not gonna go anywhere near, I may end up adding those into the four shots container later for cleaning product or whatever as well once again it is totally worth you doing your own research on this jump on one of the forums home distiller nz home distiller or on the firewater subreddit do some more research and figure out what applies to your specific situation before you go doing any of this but because i was talking to you guys too much i ended up taking a fair bit more than that i got no problem with this like i said there's no way that this would have ended up in my final product anyway the only thing that I've lost out on here is maybe a little bit of faints that would have gone into the next run, but whatever, I'm not stressed about that. Just for those that are wondering, this has turned out at around about 80%. So I'll get rid of this, don't have to worry about it. Next up, come the heads. So I'm home alone while I'm recording this video tonight and I am freaking starving. But what I can't do is go inside to make myself dinner and leave that still alone. Luckily, I was prepared for this before I started distilling. So here we go. <laughs> Perfect distilling food. Next off the still come the heads, and you may notice that we're going to be talking about the stuff that comes off the still sort of broken down into different parts. There are a lot of guys out there that have been doing this so long and they're so good at what they do that they can literally decide what they're going to keep for their final product right now at this point in time with the information they're getting from the still and by sort of smelling and tasting the product that's coming off the still as well. Me. I cannot do that yet. I am nowhere near good enough for that. I have to let all the jars sit out on the table overnight and then taste them the next day to decide exactly what I'm keeping and what I'm throwing away. And because of that, I like to collect in relatively small jars. So these are 500 ml jars. And the reason I like to do that is it breaks the sort of the different fractions coming off the still up into very small things that then sort of, you know, like everything that goes in here is an average of what's gone in here, obviously. And then the next day I can smell that and decide what I want to keep and what I want to get rid of. If I was putting it all into one big container, then if I miss that point on the still, everything that is in that jar either has to go or stay. I can't take it back out again unless I redistill it. So for that reason, I like to use small cuts jars. And honestly, I would go smaller if I could. I just don't have enough glassware to do it. So a tip from a almost newbie to distiller to any newbie distillers, start collecting cuts jars now. You're never going to have too many of them. <laughs> anyway, back to the heads. I'm going to keep my heads to assess the next day. And honestly, this is, uh, this is now jar number three. And I think I'm starting to head towards hearts now. You start to notice a difference where the, uh, the nail polish remover, the really harsh sort of alcoholy or rubbing alcoholy smell starts to vanish and fade away. And a lot of those really fruity sort of fake ester, like um, a bag of starbursts all mixed together, those flavors and smells start to disappear as well. And in this case, I'm starting to pick up the corn a little bit more too. In any case, we don't want the heads in our final product. I know it's really tempting to go for more product, but at the end of the day, it's going to lower the quality of what you're drinking. And once again, it's still going to be giving you those headaches and it's going to taste hot and horrible. One of the things you're going to hear a whole lot amongst home distillers is that it has kind of ruined commercial booze for them. And one of the main reasons is that people say that they can taste or detect heads in commercial products a whole lot more than they can their own stuff that they make at home. Honestly, I'm starting to understand that. I'm starting to get it. And it is pretty cool that we can make our own stuff the way we want it 
to a quality that we're happy with. That's pretty choice. Anyway, so after heads comes the hearts, and that's the good stuff. That is the stuff we want, and the stuff that is going to be guaranteed to end up in our final product. Like I said earlier, I don't trust myself to decide what is hearts and what is heads or tails right now while I'm running this still. I want to make that decision tomorrow, so I'm going to use small cuts jars the whole way through. People that do know their stuff, however, will, when they hit the hearts, and they know they've hit the hearts, move up to a larger collecting vessel because they know they're going to keep it all anyway. I'm not going to do that. But I do like to take my best guess now and record it so when I go to assess the stuff the next day, I can kind of see whether or not I was right, whether or not I was wrong, whether I was being too greedy or too conservative, and then kind of adjust for next time I'm running the still. So I think I want to take a taste and a sample from jar number four because I'm thinking this is my first sort of real jar of hearts on this room and I'll show you exactly how I do that as soon as this jar is filled up. I've just tested jar number four and it's sitting at about 75%. Um, people last time were asking me why I don't use a parrot, why I'm not testing every jar that comes off the still and essentially the reason is that I just don't care. I really don't care <laughs> exactly what it is because I don't want to try and use that as a crutch now for deciding my cuts later. I do check it every now and again to make sure that I'm not, you know, like way off the charts, like collecting at 85% or something crazy. I want that much lower for something like this where I want to be carrying flavor over. But like I said, I want to be making my cuts based on my senses tomorrow. Later on when I teach myself how to really make those cuts by my senses, I, I probably will look at building a parrot um, just to have more information. Anyway, 75%, I want to knock that down to about 30% to taste it now. So I'm just using a teaspoon to measure it out. Uh, also, just a word right now, when you're doing this, if you're gonna taste more than one jar, make sure you wash all of these things really well before doing the next one, otherwise you're just contaminating one with the next. In any case, I am tasting this and smelling it and trying to decide whether or not this is where my hearts have started, whether it's true hearts with there's still heads in it. And like I said, I'm taking a guess today so I can double check it tomorrow. The things that I look for to try and detect heads are first of all the smell. Is it prickly on your nose? Does it kind of assail your nose? Does it feel a little bit like pins and needles in your nose? Do you get a strong smell of those fake estery sort of fruity flavors or aromas obviously? And then on the tongue, once again, is it prickly? Are you getting like a little stabbing sort of anesthetic almost feeling? especially on the sides of your tongue and once again are you picking up those fake fruit flavors it's one of those things that you kind of really need to just try it i can't describe it to you so it's a really good idea to be able to lay all this stuff out pick something that is hearts and then compare that to something that you know is going to be heads and get those two extremes and from there you can start to figure out where the transition happens and what you are going to sort of smell taste perceive and feel and the difference between hearts and heads. I'm not entirely convinced that that is hearts. I think it's getting close, but I want to test uh, jar number five as well and um, have a C there. So I've got a second glass for that. This is about the same ABV, so. I believe I was wrong, and I think that the hearts have shown up sort of halfway through jar four. That's my guess to compare to what I see tomorrow. But anyway, I think I can safely assume that I'm into the hearts now. So at this point in your run, you want to sit back, relax, you're in for the long haul now. I'm going to keep collecting in 500 ml jars just once again so I can divide things up and decide what I want to keep and what I don't want to keep. During the course of your run, the ABV coming off the spout is just going to keep tapering off lower and lower and lower. There's only so much alcohol we've got in that boiler, right? So it kind of makes sense. As that ABV tails off, you're also heading closer and closer towards the tails which are going to turn up at the end of your run. Just keep in mind with all of these transitions, you know, from heads to hearts, hearts to tails, that because we're pot stilling, those transitions are going to be very, very blurred. It's not going to be a hard and fast change, it's going to be a gradual transition over time. I like to try and do the same thing I did for the transition between heads and hearts, 
and once again pick or predict where I think that transition is coming while I'm running the still and then check it the next day when I actually assess everything. For me, tails present kind of like somewhere between wet dog and old sort of moist cardboard. It's really not a nice uh, flavor or smell. The strange thing is that the tails are also where a lot of the fun occurs depending on what you're making. Like for the, uh, the bastard scotch that I made, video up top here, a lot of the really sort of grungy, smoky, um, iodine sort of flavors that I personally like in scotch showed up in the tails as well. So once again, this is why I like to collect in smallish jars. I might, when I start transitioning into tails, find sort of three, four, five jars that just have nothing going for them. They're just funky, they're off, they smell and taste like wet dog. But then suddenly the sixth jar of tails still has a little bit of that wet dog, but it has this amazing smoky flavor or some other amazing flavor that you're not going to get from any other place in the run. You can then take that jar and blend a portion of it back into your finished product if you want to. You don't have to use the whole thing. Maybe 20% of that jar is enough to give the rest of the product a nice smoky hit or whatever other flavor you're finding down there. Obviously, I'm not really expecting to find smoke down in the tails for a UJSSM, but I am thinking I'm gonna find something down there that I like. Basically smell it, taste it, use your senses to see what you can pick up and try and predict where that cut is coming. Once you're into the tails, I like to collect everything down super low and if I'm out in the shed doing something anyway, I'll collect all the way down to about 10% and then I'll use that for the feints for the next run. Of course it's up to you, you don't have to go that low if you don't want to. Basically it's an effort at how much electricity or gas you want to put into it and how much patience you have as well this is how much of that product you want to recycle for next time honestly it's totally up to you guys but the general numbers sort of fall somewhere between 25 and 10 percent i'd say that's where about 90 percent of home distillers stop their collection and move on to doing something else so there you have it team this has been my uj ssm generations one through four spirit run and I guess a spirit run in a nutshell for new distillers as well. Obviously guys, distilling is a whole lot more complex than I could possibly cram into one video. So if you're new to this and you're looking at doing it, hit up some of those forums and communities that I told you about before. Go through and watch a bunch of these other videos and videos from other people as well and get as much information as you possibly can, as much research as you can before you get started. Trust me, you will appreciate it later on. <laughs> In any case team, thanks for hanging out. I really appreciate it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you really liked it and you're not subscribed yet, have a think about doing so and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya!